All right. Oh, yeah, we're, we're 30 minutes in, and we haven't talked about the other stuff. All right, so we've got maintenance coming on June 7th, and a whole lot of the game is going to change on that day. Um, while it's not necessarily, like, the most splashy change, like, you won't see it um, literally everywhere or anything like that, you'll see it everywhere. <laughs> All right. So here's what's happening on June 7th. So number one, um, we're the minor stuff is that we're going to have a change to the damage log, and we're going to have in co-op, we're going to have practice mode. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we they promised that last year. Um, it looks like this maintenance is going to be the one where they put it in, where it's like, there's a lot of intimidation factor involved, where people are afraid of doing Belial, afraid of doing Super Bahamut, um, and what they're going to do is you can get into a, you can get into a co-op room and you can host a raid and it's not going to cost you anything. It's not going to cost you AP. It's not going to cost you, um, the host material and you will be able to bring other people into this because it's uh, hosted via co-op room and not just like trial battle mode or anything like that. And you can practice. You can learn what uh, how to do things you can sort of get the the first time jitters out and so that's going to be really good for people who just are intimidated by high level raids you know it's, it, it's a way they can do it without brute fo trying to brute force people into going hey turn on ascendant prayer <laughs> you know yeah that's that's pretty yeah i actually do like that a lot because there's so many people that yeah i even know that are just like Oh, I haven't done this raid. It's so, so scary. I'm, and we, us are like, we can help you, you know? Yeah. It's like, just, just help. Let us help you. All right. So, next up, uh, we have on June 7th. Uh, there are going to be a few, um, like quality, of, smaller quality of life updates. I believe they're looking at the host materials for. Um, it was specifically Ultimate Bahamut, Grand Order, and I think the the regular Dark Rapture, because those are the ones that need the most um, annoying materials now so it's like i'm trying to find that in your in your posts mm -hmm. but like hosting the peacemaker's wings is actually kind of annoying <laughs> like in order to do this you need to have um oh man i can't even do it from this screen you have to have a whole bunch of anima from six different bosses and not many people run those bosses no not at all and so uh, they are looking at making them easier to host, which is a good thing overall for the health of the game. And then, all right, here's the big one. And this is the, t like, this was such a big thing that they actually had KMR write a blog post that was as long as... Um, Choregra, basically, about why they did this. And that is our old friend Keelan is being changed. He is going to have the Beelzebub clause on him where there is only room for one Keelan in a grid. That's healthier, to be honest. It is... Yeah, I, I, I always compare things to trading card games because that's, like I said, where where we come from and uh, that's where a lot of side games come from also. And it's like, this effect, it's an engine. It, and as other things around it get better, then it gets better and makes them exponentially better because not like the most recent example is the Cantact debuff that Shalem has or mm -hmm. Paliostro or Summer Medusa where... Um, like, it's a really powerful thing when you do it once. If you do it five times in a row, it's actually game-breaking. 
And remember last time we actually had to change eh, change something around that de specific debuff. Yeah, they made it so you couldn't extend it with Frowl. And it's like, well, that patched up one of the problems. It didn't patch up the fundamental problem, which is, why don't you just summon Keelan then? And do it more. And so something that KMR said in his blog post is that while we were designing future fights, the number one best answer to literally anything we did was summon Keelan. Um, that's not that's not a very healthy thing to work around. Yeah, and so for the health of the game going forward, they're just like, okay, we've actually looked into this for years, but we didn't want to pull the trigger because people don't like having their toys taken away. But they're just like, okay, look, we have Diaspora coming, we have five more bosses that are supposed to be harder than the Dark Rapture coming. And every single hard mode boss since freaking uh, Ultimate Bahamut has had to be designed with Keelan in mind. So the first Ultimate Bahamut, 15% um, and 10%, they inflict uh, summonless. summonless on you. That was, that was there specifically because of Keelan. Like, you, let's go down the list of other hard content. So there, eh, that was, um, that was Wings of Terror, Impo no, no, it was Imperial Ascension, Impossible. That's specifically mm -hmm. anti keelan It's like, okay. Dark Rapture, it inflicts summonless on you at the start of the fight, so turn one for three turns, and then inflicts summonless on you with Gopher Wood Arc. Which is the tw last 25% of the The last the 25%. Game. And that last 25% one was specifically because of Keelan. Because if you hit Keelan anywhere below 25%, you get to pretty much ignore the last 25%. Correct. That made actually doing the fire so really hard. Mm -hmm. Because you couldn't summon. Right. Uh, Long Live the King actually gets to keep its summon list because that one you can predict and avoid. So you can literally break the trigger. Yeah, just break karma, quote unquote. Just uh, they're actually changing Long Live the King, thank God, so that below fifty percent, the fatal is chain. Is it all fatal chains? It isn't all fatal chains now. I can't wait for that one. I need that one in my bones. I need it like right now. Um, Belial. The entire reason Belial has his field, <laughs> Crimson Sky, I think it's called. Crimson uh, Sky is because of Keelan. Like the entire reason that summon it, you it lets you summon and then adds punishes you yeah punishes you for that is because of Keelan. So they were just like, this can't this can't continue. Yeah, no, you were literally locked out of summoning unless you need you really needed to summon. And the thing is that it also made a lot of the solos very RNG dependent because toward the end you would still hit Keelan and try to gamble on the last couple turns as you block and hope that you rolled the two or the one on certain skills. And not the four. Yeah. It's just like... They had to do so much. Like, And also, yeah, there were uh, multiple proud pluses that punished you for summoning that they're, all, they're removing every single one of those. Um, Let's see here. Violet Knight proud plus... And Golden Akita Proud Plus no longer eh, no longer uh summon less. Cherub um had one where um if you summoned it inflicted summonless on you for a few turns so that you couldn't chain Keelins. Oh, I but, see yeah. the I see the Cherub. That was a, that was in both Proud and Proud, Proud Plus. Mm -hmm. And so um with with that change, uh where Keelin can only be a one of in a grid. Like, there's a lot of uh, space that they've opened back up so that they don't have to just brute force you into saying, you can't summon Keelan. And, like, a lo in a lot of those cases, people would just summon Keelan earlier anyway. <laughs> like, so, this opens up room for more characters to, uh, to come in there. Like, some people were trying to claim that EO's gone. It's like, no, 
Eo really only needed one Keelan anyway? <laughs> yeah, I don't... Get those? As someone who's played, who played Eo extensively with, uh, after her uh, five-star. Yeah, no. Like, um... Four-star, sorry. Yeah, like, Christmas Chicken only needs one. Like, Soriz basically only needs one. Soriz is amazing. What a guy. He, he... But yeah, like, this opens up room for a lot of the summons that have fallen out of favor. Like, the Mega Bungles. Like, the... Uh, you know, the Ka-Ongs of the world. Like, I haven't been able to fit in so many of these because you just fit in a Keelan. Like, why would you ever have this call when you could just have a Keelan in that spot? Because it's like, let's take... So, one of the old classics that I used to use a lot, um, not Typhon, but over here, Dark Angel Olivia. On paper, her call is really, really good. good. It's a really good summon. It reduces your cool, uh, cooldowns by one. It delays. And it's a delay on a summon so that it doesn't make Belial mad at you. I never used this in Belial. To be fair, Belial will get mad at you for summoning. Right, but not anymore. Dark Angel Olivia can now be an amazing summon in Belial now that Belial no longer punishes you for summoning her. So you get the delay out of her, you shorten the cooldown on your other, uh, your other dark characters. It's like, I'm putting her back in. She's she's going right back in there, you know. Yeah. Like, um, in a lot of cases, uh, if for whoops, I didn't click on Cal right there. Um, there were the old strategies of like Lily and Kaong and Europa, where you just be like, I'm not taking damage for three turns. It's like previously, that was a thing that could happen. Now, uh, be like bef in the in between times, you were just like, why would I do that when I can just hit Keelan, and you know, just do some of the like into thin air substitute ignore damage uh, things. It's like, well, this is you can you can run this guy again. You can run Grandpa Fish. So anyway, um, I'm glad that this happened. Because the thing is that people were just like, why don't you just nerf the things that work well with Keelan? It's like, everything That's works well every with Keelan. every character in the game. Yeah, once again, going into the uh, going into the card game space, like you learn from watching card game design that it's the engine that is the problem and not the finisher. Because like there is always going to be a best finisher. And the thing that makes the finisher broken is if you can get there earlier than anything else or overuse it. And because if you if you ban the finisher, right? So let's just say that it's like, oh yeah, Soriz is nerfed. It's like, okay, then you just go, use the next thing. Use you. Let's use Summer Matera or something like that, right? Um, it's it's really Keelan that, that was the problem, and I'm glad that they finally made the decision to make it so that you know this grid that I was showing you, the one that is the Stock, um, uh, super Bahamut roll for water. This doesn't work anymore. Note that uh, water players have experimented and are like, "Oh, this still works with one Keelan." <laughs> it's a little bit harder. It uh, you know you can you use different you characters in the back now. You don't get you don't get free turn uh, five free turns. You get you get like three free turns. Like I saw people who. Um, would bring in like Valentine's Vera or similar kinds of characters in order to tank for three turns and just take those free turns like you know the Summer Alexial style free turns yeah 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 <laughs> so anyway um, anything else we need to say about the Keelan change uh no, it it's literally it's best health for the game. The the not, uh, nice thing though is that if you have multiple Keelans, you can break them later on for uh some anima, some really nice anima. Yeah, um, I've actually been sitting on all of this old mega anima for uh Keelan, and I need you know it's what thirty to uncap a, uh, yeah it's thirty to transcend to um to one hundred and forty. And a lot. It's a lot. The good thing is, 
in the course of me playing this game for so damn long, uh, I think I sh you, you guys uh, may have seen this, I have a lot of Keelans, and those are going to turn into a really large and juicy number of Omega Anima, and I'm happy. Thanks. Thanks, Keelan. Thanks, old friend. Um, I think, oh, yeah, let's see, that's 12. Uh, that's another 16. So I have 28 Keelans, e Keelan equivalents that are being broken after this, uh, after this update. That's, that's pretty much an entire other, uh, Transcendent Evoker. Yay! <laughs> nice. Huh. So. Wait, did they make it so that you can't, you can't reduce it yet? Let's see. You can still reduce it. You just shouldn't. All right. You guys, you know, you know that there's a. That this is coming up, so yeah. do it with your eyes open. Or people are just gonna make a statement and they're like whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do you. That you're at loss of resources. All right. So um, that is the raid balance and damage log updates, uh, and the Keelan update. That's all coming on June seventh. We're gonna have a six-hour maintenance. We're gonna come in there, and the game will be uh, pretty significantly changed. Um. That's that's that part. All right. I think we forgot the uh, Grand Order Impossible actually lowers its HP now. Oh yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be raid nerfs. So there's uh, there were three raids that they are specifically going in and changing um, with raid balance updates. So one called out was uh, we called up Beelzebub already. Yeah, Beelzebub was being changed. Um, so Grand Order Impossible is being changed so that she has less HP more ct dots and um like there were there was some sort of strange damage cap in place on her that is being raised i think it was because of her field where people would bring in like dark main character narmea korwa and then like ladiva or someone like that in order to just um take advantage of the Grand Order field that rewards you for having more elements of characters in your party. Oh yeah, that is a thing, huh? Yeah, and so I guess that cap was originally in place to keep that thing from growing too much. So they looked at it and they're just like, no one joins these things except for people who are incredibly dedicated uh, gold brick hunters and they don't want to go into Wings of Terror impossible. And they're just like, okay, let's make this easier for people. Um, like, it takes... Do you, have you seen how incredibly specific it is that, uh, to solo Grand Order Impossible? I don't want to know because I, I know the HP value of it currently. Yeah, because she CA so freaking often in her current form. Uh, pre Too much. Yeah. Um, you just you, you totally get attritioned out because her gimmick is that she does weight damage, so you just keep taking chunks of percentage based damage and then she starts getting stacks when you're at low health and then she just kills you and it's like she kills you in a way that you cannot game around unless you just have a disgusting amount of healing every turn i, I still really hate that uh her race strike at 50 percent yeah just erase literally po number four. points at the fourth person says you're dead and you can't come back yeah um like that thing actually makes me not want to join a uh, Grand Order Impossible until after 25%. It's like, I don't want to just lose a character or be forced to run, like, Vazaraga 4th slot. Or just an absolute sacrificial character. I just I just want to play. <laughs> anyway. You. You. You're the one having a bad day today. Ah, uh, I'm I'm actually looking at at uh, how much the amplify was on the field. Uh, how if much... you're what if you're one element, no boost. Right. Two elements, fifteen, three, forty-five, and four elements at seventy-five percent. Yeah, most of the time, in practical terms, you're gonna get the forty-five percent. Um, with the like dark wind setup, where it's like dark main character who's got a uh, dark claw main hand or something like that Celeste claw main hand Narmea, uh, Grand Narmea because she'll just do the right element uh, damage anyway um, 
someone to buff her, um, summer Zoe to get her to low health, and then get deathed out by your main character for a character who uh, um, boosts the field while also buffing, and then you just go ham. So anyway, hopefully we'll see a few more people in Grand Order, because it is really annoying trying to get these Marimo things, because, yeah, people just... The raid takes too long, and it's annoying to put on auto. Yeah, I I need actually some of those because I've been working on my new World Order uh, weapons. Mm -hmm. All right, the other one, uh, I don't think this was enough of a change. So for Lindworm, uh, Lindworm was sort of your gateway into V2, and so Lindworm shows you what the next trigger is, but also doesn't let you do anything about it, which is kind of unique among V2. And they're changing. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Hound's Flame, uh, 80% and 50% normal. Uh, no it just has death loose electable if they, if they die from it. There's nothing you can do. You can't cancel it. Have fun. Yeah, so they're adding uh, break conditions to bring it in line with modern V2. Um, they're not reducing the HP on it, which is annoying. <laughs> That's it... 950 million, yeah. Yeah. Like, right now, if I want to uh, get Lindworm scales, I just find somebody else's. But, like, I am perfectly capable of soloing Lindworm. It just takes 15 minutes. <laughs> it's not It's not a great time. It's, it's not a great time. All right. So, I hopefully uh, will see that HP number go down. But until then, yeah. At least it's being brought in line with things and they're looking at changing it. Um Ch -ch changes. Yeah, so those are raid battle changes that are incoming. Uh, did we cover everything that's coming on uh, in the next week? Uh, checking. Uh, looks like it. Phew. Because um, after this event, we've got ourselves Xeno Clashes also hit on June seventh. Um, I think for the sake of time, we're not gonna talk about Dante and the Last Sarivar until. We have them in hand with their five stars because they're getting both getting five stars at the same time. Uh, they're both they're, good weapons. They are. Good, they're both good weapons, though Dante much more so than the Saravar, but the Saravar still has a role in this game. You know, uh, where are you? Xeno weapons. Let's go take a look at Earth and Water. Um, yeah, I'm excited for Dante five star. I don't even think it like needs to change anything. I think it's just glad to have it with higher stats. And good HP. HP. Uh, which one's the Shadowfire again? Is that the is that the sword? The sword with the the sword that people main handed for a long time because it has an Earth Switch on it. So I that actually helped me so much in my last uh, solo in my last solo for uh, for Blue Sea. Yeah, like the thing is that the next best replacement for it as far as like what I find people using in hard content is World Ender. And it's just like, okay, all right, sure. I mean Yeah. Wait, do I have a four star World Ender? No, I'm close though. You're at three I see. Yeah. Alright, anyway, uh so we'll cover those when they come around because this episode already went long. Um we'll We'll talk about, like, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus actually has a big free update coming tomorrow. There was a video uh, out about the stuff earlier today. Yeah, Kane um, outdid himself just, um, like, sneaking in just, like, stupid memes into the narration of that video. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, I know that there was a it's free real estate joke in there. Um what did he say when showing like the one frame increased speed on universal overhead and overdrive? It's like, look at our boy go or something like that. Yeah, it was look at our boy go. I, I believe that's what it was. <laughs> like, um, it's just one of those things where it's like, dang, I wish I had that kind of freedom. And then I thought about it when I do have that kind of freedom and people yell at me for it. <laughs> <laughs> Good video. Uh, I'm sad. It gives you more reasons to use meter in that game because yes. there's only one. We were actually and also, yeah, go ahead. And also, 
it is uh you don't want to spend 100 meter to use her on a reversal that will be easily punished yeah um like we were we were kind of talking about this where it's like what if like using meter in order to push block would actually make the game worse but it's like using meter in order to dash forward with strike invuln or cancel a normal that's actually probably pr a, a that is actually a conscious decision to make. You know, it's not automatic. Like you actually you are rewarded for seeing the right situation to use it in, especially since like you can get fireballed out of it or you know, maybe they just don't throw out that normal like an idiot. It's like may maybe that's the time like fairies will actually have to think about it's like maybe I don't press sweep right now. Maybe they're they going... don't hit my age. Yeah. Maybe I'll just get spent instead. Because <laughs> I believe that's a projectile. Yeah, it is a projectile. It At least it clashes with uh, Grant's uh, 236M. Yeah, it clashes with projectiles, so I'm pretty sure Gispent is a projectile. But, you know, it, it forces... It changes the thought process a little bit. You can't just, like, spam 2M with Catalina or something like that. Or just, like, do things like that to try and wall people out. Um, Those normals are so good. Like, a lot of uh, Grand Blue Versus is actually... Sp spacing it out, yourself out and whip punishing. Mm -hmm. And having the ability to dash forward and it's like, people are like, oh man, you can just uh, neutral skip. It's like, I mean, it's not really skipping neutral. You're paying a huge cost for it. Like, getting to 50 meter against characters who can wall you out is not easy. Definitely not. Also, it's really it's really annoying getting it, getting uh, blocked out by five H from Gag. I'll let you know that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I can totally see that. And then you know, um, there's that. There's the backdash to try and get out of like the safe jump setups. So safe jumps got slightly worse. Um, Good. Yeah. <laughs> you a, lot, have... a, a lot of knockdowns were homogenized because there, you had no wake up option. You ha it it was basically your character had a DP or didn't have a DP, <laughs> like an invulnerable reversal, and, and your DP lost to safe jump. Yeah, now everybody has has that, and then so it's part of it changes your thought process. So it's like, hey, that's a pretty cool thing. And then, so DJ, how much did Blaze Blue change when Overdrive was uh, was added? Uh, a lot, and and for negative, uh, some negatives and positives, mm -hmm. because uh, we're not gonna talk about this in this in, in this episode, right? So, well, th that's also because overdrive was not a it was a universal mechanic that was also different for everybody. Correct. This, oh, this version of overdrive is the same for everybody. Everybody follows the same rules, where um, your normals will now do chip. You stop taking chip. You can CA at any time, so it's like very KOF max mode or armor mode or whatever you want to call it. And you only get it once per round or per game, right? Once per round. It says round okay. in the the explanation on uh, the page. You get it once per round. It costs all hundred of your meter, and if you get hit at all, then you lose thirty three percent. Yeah, thirty three percent of it goes away. And so, you know, before people would just sit around as soon as CA was on the uh, on deck because it's like well the next combo immediately ends in uh, in skybound art if if it's going to either kill or give a bit advantageous position this you actually think a lot more like meter gain and meter usage is gonna change a lot and so I'm really excited a lot more with Vera now yeah um but I'll how is Vera's meter gain after she's transformed? Oh, it's fine. So there, it, it's pretty reasonable for you to like um, transform and then still have access to these things later in the round. Yeah, because yeah. Your, your meter gain is actually really insane with yeah. your access. Uh, the thing that also is really good with this, by the way, mm -hmm. is for it actually gives you a good recent instant block now. Oh yeah, for the extra meter. Yeah, because before all it did was you had a hundred meter now. Woo! Mm -hmm. Well, it used to be really important for Ladiva, but R.I.P. Ladiva's uh, um, invuln, in, it, complete like three quarter screen invuln on Lariat. Super. 
Yeah, and now that that thing loses projectiles now. And so does um Yeah, so so does uh, it's called Rush. So Rush and Backshift. Also, uh something I didn't cover, while you're in OD, you don't have access to Rush or Backshift. You cannot use your OD meter on either of those options. So you're That makes sense. Yeah. So I, I think it's got to be cool. I'm looking forward to Side Games Cup. I'm looking forward to Evo. Uh, both of those are happening in the next two months. And, yeah, they'll they'll be able to use a lot of info from people playing the game in order to inform their decisions on what to do after Evo. You know, I'm actually surprised that we got to use the animations from RPG mode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because there's cause... animations for going to overdrive in that, in that mode. Um, or also, like, I think it's also the animation for, like, casting buffs in RPG mode, was it? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wonder how unsafe it is on block. Um, it says that it is... It actually pushes back on block. Okay, so, so you can't just eat... Eat, 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 uh, eat it for taking damage? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, you... But in, in RPG mode, you can actually do spot dodge it. Yes, I believe so. Um, I, like... Uh, in the blog post on it, like I'm sure t once the uh, maintenance is done and we actually see the whole mechanic in action, um, then like we'll see what happens when people dodge it, etc. Uh, but right now it says that um, you know it's it is safe when it gets blocked, so you can use it as an emergency evasion. You cannot do it while blocking, as far as I can tell. Which okay, so it's not, it's, it's not the uh, blaze blue. It's not burst, yeah. Oh no, you can overdrive in, in block stun in blaze blue. <laughs> that's a, that's as of CF. Hold on, let me let me switch views here and let's go let's go read through this real quick. All right. Uh, the thing is, in blaze blue, you also have less uh, OD timer as a result. Mm -hmm. So let's go take a look at the. 2.8 change. Lock speed changes. That's a, Those are always cool. <laughs> those are very important. Alright, here's new battle system. Let's go take scroll down to overdrive here. Alright, so it does a shockwave wave around you. Did they uh, do that in English yet or no? Uh, not, that I, uh, not that I've seen yet. So I know the patch notes are in English now. Oh, are they? Good. So it says here, uh, so the start of the animation is in Vuln. Uh, it sends out a shockwave, and it has an uh, hold on. It has a that's a little, on it. that's a really large pushback. Oh, you were looking at the version on block. Yeah. So, all right. Um, when ha when you do it, um, so so even if they block, it pushes them all the way back, and so you can use it as a, an emergency like get off me button. But it does cost you all hundred of your meter to do that. I mean, what's the, between that and just doing a raw super? Uh, this is not punishable, and then gives you a buff afterward, as opposed to the raw super sometimes just leading to you eating it if they were expecting it. Anyway, sometimes you just die. Sometimes you just die. So you know it changes to that. Um, so you can lose OD meter by getting hit. Uh, one per round. Um, while in overdrive, you are not allowed to use tactical moves. Tactical moves are the back shift and rush up mm -hmm. here. And then the then the, here's the full list of buffs, which is attack up, which is about 25% from the video that they made. Um, note, by the way, that this does not uh, up your damage on overhead, throw, skybound dart, or super skybound dart here. Okay, that's, uh, that's, so it, that's probably healthy. It boosts your normals and your specials, specifically. Um, then uh, it gives you chip damage on your normals and doesn't it lets you uh, ignore chip damage while blocking. However, you know if you're blocking during OD, then you're you're already you're still in trouble. However, you're less. So in you're trouble not than you're not taking hits. You're not checkmated by being at like magic pixel health. Uh, when and, someone and, throws and, fireballs like, at you. Yeah, that was always a horrible feeling. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, your overhead attack, your universal overhead, gets like one to two frames faster. It doesn't do more damage, but it gets faster, which can be the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, because uh, one of the things is that w with that frame distance, uh, the difference, people who sometimes who ma uh, mash against seeing overhead, they might just eat it mm -hmm. because they do miss time, uh, time uh, when they hit their light button. Yeah. So there's also that. A subtly different thing is that when you do simple input on your specials, um, then it actually gives you the damage and the um, cooldown as if you'd done technical input. That's kind of cool. And then the last thing in the gray box here, it's like, all right, so you can use the invuln to get out of uh, an Oki situation, so just to escape someone else's safe jump or whatever. Um, you can use it to just push someone to the other side of the screen for at the for you know the cost of a full hundred meter, or you can just use it to try and make a like craft a comeback. Yeah, we'll have to see the start, like how startup works with it, because it, I'm looking at that GIF and it looks really long. Oh yeah, but it's like it's uninvolved for a while. But if you just see it coming, then you just dodge and then hit, like force them to block and just hit, you know. At least they can't get chips, unless yeah. you know you get punished. We'll see about what happens if you dodge it. We'll see. All right. Anyway, I'm I'm really excited for this. When is Psy Games Cup again? Uh, Psy Games Cup Summer is... When is Psy Games Cup Summer? I think it's... I think it's going to be in what? Uh, Corigra in June. No. In... We're in June. In May, I think they said when it was going to be. Psy Games Cup. Cypher Kitchen. Psy Games Cup is in July. Okay. So people people actually have time to readjust to it. Mm -hmm. And then after Psy Games Cup, we'll have Evo. And that'll be uh, North America's first like big chance at seeing this in action. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited too. And then Psy Games Cup and Evo are also their chances to, you know, make uh, maybe an announcement or two. Maybe. Uh, isn't one of the streams uh, during Evo? Also true. <laughs> yeah, about that. I don't know. Maybe, uh, we'll see. I, I really would like... Maybe to they can tell for it over. <laughs> Alright, so... That was a long episode, DJ. We still got more to do, but we'll, we, we punted to next week for when Xeno Kokutis and Xeno Vohumana who are coming in. Um... There was an entire choregra that we haven't really gone through, but we did the really important immediate stuff first, and we'll do things from there later. And hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, the end of June will be nice and calm after Unite and Fight, because uh, Unite and Fight's also being adjusted. We haven't talked about that yet. It was in choregra, but we're, we're punting. We're punting so that we can actually like have time to do other things tonight. Yeah, no, it's already like 10 something. Yeah. It's like, no thoughts on Alethea? I have plenty of thoughts on Alethea. However, we'll do that later because we've already spent 75 minutes talking about like Keelan and things that are happening in the next four days. We so talked next... our first 30 minutes where things did, that just happened. So. Yeah. so, next week and the week after that, I'm pretty much anticipating us still covering Corey News and things like that. Um, and then the, let's see here, during Unite and Fight, I predict us, so that'll be the 23rd, I predict that will be the time that we do the, uh, the next Grand Blue Fantasy draft. That'll be a fun one. How many bow characters there are? Not many. Not enough. In order to fill out that draft list, we're gonna have to dig real deep. <laughs> real deep, friends. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna use bow adjacent. I understand. Bow adjacent, or no, like seriously, let's. So, if we just look at all characters in the game who are bow at all, I don't have two of the Materas, so she brings us. The, like, I'm including R's and SR's, DJ. There are 28 of them, 
and like five of them are Mater, I think. <laughs> Two of them are Tabita, three of them are Ilsa's, like four of them I think are Suterra's. We're gonna have to go real, real deep in the can, buddy. Let's see here. There's thirty total. That includes uh, Mew second years. Uh, there are four Suteras. Yeah, there's four Suteras and like four Materas, I think. Four Materas, three Elsas, three Finas, two Asters, two Tabinas. Oh, oh the pickings and, get real. The pickings get and, real thin. And Millie. Because Millie technically has two. Which one's Millie? Oh, yeah, yeah, Millie. Millie, yeah, are, Millie are in show. Eh, saw you loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god. Oh, it's gotta be a bloodbath after the first two picks or so. I don't even know if there's enough. Oh, there's enough for the number of people there. <laughs> but like especially since we're disqualifying actually choosing the inter eternal, possibly. Oh, oh it gets it gets real thin. It gets real thin, buddy. <laughs> oh, who do you want in the et the Eternals? The Eternal. Like I might have to add in freaking Iroha. <laughs> Who doesn't even hold a bow? She it, holds it. a bow. Not in game, apparently. In game, yes. Not in her spec sheet. But if you press one of her buttons, she shoots a bow. Okay? <laughs> she used what? Spear? Spear. One of these buttons sh fires a bow. See that? That is a bow icon. And that may be enough to qualify her. We may need to stretch the imagination here, buddy. I mean, if we're including Mew's second years, then yeah. <laughs> like, the Mew's second years and Iroha might have to be put on that list in order to fill numbers. <laughs> Whoo, boy. Ooh. It's gonna get It's going to get real ugly after the first two picks. <laughs> the arrow is just a short year. Yeah, they... I mean, we do have a spear, a spear. that is literally an arrow from a, from a very large bow. Do I even have that anymore? It's the wind, Zeno. I do. The true conviction flash spear. This is literally a, an arrow from Sagittarius's bow. If we're getting real desperate, Mark we on. may have to add Zeno Sagittarius as a bow character. <laughs> Uh, then we add Granny, too. Oh, yep, yep. Granny. Granny has a bow. So does Artemis. Artemis has a bow. Oh, yeah, the bow Artemis, yeah. It's yeah, let's go, just look into all these summons. <laughs> we gotta we gotta look at the art of all these summons and just see who is, who is physically holding a bow in their hands. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, thanks for joining me for so long, DJ. Uh, next week, um... Well, I th no, no, there's nothing that's going to get in the way of anything next week, I think, thankfully. Okay. Not that I think of. Uh, so next week, we're going to be back on normal schedule, and hopefully it'll be a uh, reasonable length episode, and I won't hold you guys hostage for 90 minutes. Just knocking on wood. Violins, well, can, then. Be, violins can be used as bows, that's true. Um, they do use a bow. So not just that, but also in like various uh, Looney Tunes from you know the 30s and 40s and such, you do actually use like a cello or a violin, and you pull back on it and you fire the uh, the bow at the bow portion of the instrument at people. That's uh, I do that's, remember this. That's ingrained in pop culture. I swear that it may have to count. Selfira may have to learn the way of the bow from her grandfather Kihar. <laughs> <laughs> if we need to, if we need to add Selfira to get to twenty, I'm going to do it, DJ. <laughs> like we got we got to fill out some numbers, numbers. <laughs> I mean, we do have enough. We do have enough uh, harp characters at this point. <laughs> yeah. Whew. All right. Anyway, thanks for joining us, everybody. We will see you guys next time. Go Later. Later.